Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar. Um, today, we have a special guest, Airtable, and we're going to be presenting how to use Dropform and Airtable to seamlessly manage data. So to get started, uh, today our presenters are going to be myself, Annabelle from Dropform. Um, I lead our webinar series here, and so you probably have seen me in a couple other webinars. Um, yeah, and I do marketing for Dropform. And today we have a special guest, Catherine. Catherine, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure. Hi, uh, I'm, I'm Catherine. I'm a marketing manager at Airtable, and I am super stoked about this new integration. Awesome. Thanks, Catherine. Okay, so to get us started in the webinar, um, we're going to talk about three common problems with data management. So both Jotform and Airtable are tools that are used to really collect data seamlessly through Jotform and then also organize it through Airtable. So our users come to us to solve all of their data collection and organization needs. So we see a lot of problems before that people have um, before they come to us. So the first problem that we see is people trying to figure out the best way to organize high volumes of data. Um, and I think this happens a lot because there is a really big misconception among you know, companies that aren't really familiar with technology and that's that software tools are either like really hard to use or they're really expensive or the list goes on. So, um, you know, we kind of want to debunk that myth today and um, through Dropform and Airtable teams can really find like um, easy to use and inexpensive software tools. So Kat, um, what are your thoughts on this sort of like misconception between um, data organization software being too hard to use or too expensive? Uh, so to address the first thing, uh, when you take into account all of the wasted time and effort that can come when you don't have your data organized, uh, that adds up. And so uh, when you kind of even those out, uh, maybe having a data organization software isn't as expensive as you might have initially thought. Uh, in terms of difficult to use, uh, you know, obviously, like lots of different software products uh, function differently, uh, but we're really in a new era of SaaS products where we've come such a long way in terms of usability and we've learned a lot from the past and it's just um, a lot easier to pick up uh, and learn new software uh, these days and um, while I hesitate to say that like anything is like, oh, it's, uh, you know, that simple because it can really be as simple or as complicated as you make it. Um, when you have a product like Jotform, for example, you're really making it so that uh, specific people are interacting with your data organization system just how you want them to. And they're feeding you the data that you need uh, just how you need it, which just minimizes friction on their end and it makes it easier for you. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And yeah, I think also too, like we are in a new area of technology um, and it is, there's so many resources on how to videos and, you know, to kind of learn the ins and outs of software. And honestly too, like once you test it out, like it's so much easier than, it's a lot easier than it seems. And it's way less scary when you just give it a try. Totally. Um, and yeah, going into our second problem. So the second biggest problem we see is not having a process in place and managing data, even though it just doesn't, it might not seem like it needs a process, it really does. Um, and I think like using our tools, you can really create an airtight workflow. Um, you can collect your data automatically through Jotform and have it funneled directly into Airtable. And um, I think that, you know, creating that really seamless process is a way to just not have to worry about human error not have to worry about any snags that happen when you know you're collecting data by hand and then entering it in by hand. Um, Kat, why do you think Airtable, I mean Airtable does a really great job of helping teams sort of like get their process aligned and you know uh, really uh, really um, in a good way. So why do you think that having a seamless process plays um, into better data organization? So um, not to get a little too philosophical here, but uh, I guess like it's like a fundamental law of the universe that entropy increases. And I think it's also a fundamental law of the universe that people are really busy and uh, you want to make sure 
that you're kind of lowering the barriers for people at every possible turn if you want to make sure that they're like participating to the fullest extent because people always have so much going on which is why it's really important to give people a structured way in which they can uh, contribute their data. Uh, so Airtable is a database. It might look like a spreadsheet. It's got like a, a grid-like appearance, uh, but it is a spreadsheet, which means that uh, when you're entering the data, it can only be accepted in certain ways. So for example, if you're picking from a dropdown uh, from a list of colors, uh, you don't have to worry about somebody misspelling purple and then creating a whole new entry or, or something like that. Uh, but like one of the reasons that the spreadsheet like has sort of uh, been so appealing to people over the years is because it provides this grid-like structure, even though the spreadsheet was originally a financial calculation tool and so it doesn't uh, model relationships in the same way that a relational database does. Uh, so this is a very long-winded answer, but uh, to get back to your original question about like process and data organization, um, if you provide a structure for people, uh, it, it eliminates the barriers that make it kind of overwhelming or difficult to get started or to contribute in a project. So uh, you need to have a structured process and a seamless process. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. And then this brings us into our third problem, which is people spending too much time on data entry. Um, and this one also kind of piggybacks on the last uh, problem that people have too. And it's just not having that process in place. So as Kat mentioned, you know, JotForm and Airtable both provide a really great structure to kind of get your data entry and get your data collection processes off to a really good start. Um, and I think, um, you know, most companies, even if you're not like say on the sales team, like you're gonna have some sort of like customer facing information that you're gonna get, whether you're on the marketing team, managing the contact form, again, if you're in sales, managing leads. And I think like when you collect that information without a tool in place, then it's just gonna lead to so much more human error when you try to like enter that into a CRM or into like an air table to organize that. Um, and actually um, I saw a HubSpot survey said that 20% of sales managers say their biggest challenge is data entry. Um, and so, you know, that being said, um, using JotForm and Airtable to collect this sort of information and, you know, really organize it to the nth degree is just a really good way just to get rid of that completely. Um, Kat, why do you think the JotForm and Airtable integration like really helps companies avoid that unnecessary data entry and really create that ideal process? Uh, so with forms, you're really like you're creating a, a structured way for people to uh, provide data to you. And you're also kind of spreading out uh, the work of data entry among like everybody that's participating instead of um, putting it on one poor person whose entire job has to be data entry. And that's where you can get a lot of mistakes happening. Uh, and so the JotForm and Airtable integration is really exciting because it opens up um, a couple of new possibilities uh, for forms uh, with Airtable. So uh, with JotForm, for example, you can have uh, entries from one form feed into uh, different tables and different bases, which means that uh, this data entry can be duplicated like to different teams if they need it, or just in general, you don't have to do as much work over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's way less work over and over again, and there's less room for errors. Um, okay, perfect. So this kind of brings us back into the products again. So as we've mentioned throughout these problems, JotForm and Airtable, you know, really helps to solve these. Um, and just to give like a brief overview, um, if you haven't heard or really know what JotForm does exactly, it is a gateway to top-notch data collection. So JotForm is the entry point for getting um, information from your customers, from your sales leads, from, you know, if you're, say, an event planner, getting uh, registrations. Um, and it's also incredibly easy to use. Um, so even if you don't have, like, much technical skill or you're not really, like, sure about software tools, you can just easily drag and drop a form and then literally cl click publish and then you have a link ready to go. Um, and 
you know, job form forms are also like way more powerful than other forms out there. Um, they offer, or at least we offer over 30 payment integrations. We have hundreds of integrations to choose from. Um, also, they're fully customizable with branding. So it's a really good tool uh, for small businesses. And we also offer plans of many different tiers too. So if you're you know, just wanting to kind of see if it's the right thing for you, you can sign up for a free plan and see if that's you know, going well and then upgrade afterwards. So there's a lot of options for teams of different sizes. And um, Kat, would you mind telling us a little bit about like why Airtable helps us solve these problems? Uh, so like for those of you who aren't already familiar with Airtable, Airtable is a uh, cloud-based collaboration platform that lets uh, teams build their own flexible software without needing to use code, uh, which kind of sounds a bit scary, but it might be a little bit more friendly to think about it as a database that looks like a spreadsheet uh, because most people are familiar with spreadsheets. We use spreadsheets to organize all kinds of things, but uh, spreadsheets are originally financial calculation software, as I mentioned before, and so they're not really set up to um, accurately portray the relationships between things, hence the power of a relational database. Uh, and uh, with JotForm, that's a way to collect all of the information from like either um, external people that you're working with, like clients or contractors or people on your team, and to just take all of that information and bring it into your own custom database that you've designed yourself that works exactly like it should uh, for your team. So for example, uh, we have uh, cattle farmers that use Airtable a lot. Uh, because there's not a lot of great software options for tracking cows. So they've built their own software from scratch that lets them like track their cattle vaccination. So that's just one example. Um, in terms of why it's important to put your information in a database instead of a spreadsheet, uh, when you have it in a database, you can manipulate the data into a lot of different ways depending on what is useful for your team or for individual team members. So that means that, uh, you know, somebody on your team really likes Trello, you can just take all that information and instead of looking at it in a grid, you can just look at it on a Kanban board. Or you have somebody that's like really, you know, scheduling is very important for them. You can take that same information from the Kanban board look at it on a calendar. And when you make any of the changes on any of those views, it's reflected uh, for the entire base. So you have a single source of truth. Um, everyone is always on the same page and different people on your team uh, can uh, look at this information in the way that's most useful for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, just as Cad said, um, I mean, these two products together are super powerful workflow and you know, with JotForm too, like you can, you can really customize the way that your different form fields go into Airtable too. So you can choose between different bases and um, different sheets. And so it's really 100% customizable on your end. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into a brief demo showing an event planning and payment form. So we've already pre-created the form just to make things a little bit quicker. Um, as you can see, we have pretty general fields in here. We have name, email, phone number, a date for the event, which services one would like to purchase, if they'd like to pay today, an image for inspiration, any other notes, and then also an area for a signature. So we're going to jump into our payment processors. And today we are going to integrate with PayPal invoicing. And that can be accessed on the left hand side under the form elements tab. So PayPal invoicing is a brand new integration and essentially after somebody fills out a form, they are directed immediately to their invoice so that they can just pay right away and not have to do any more back and forth. So I'm gonna click on PayPal invoicing and add that to my form. And then I'm gonna move it up just a little bit so it looks a little bit better on here. Um, perfect. So I've already tested this before the webinar, and so my products have pre-populated in this form. Now I'm gonna come over to the left-hand side where I can set up my PayPal invoicing. So I'm gonna to connect to my PayPal account. I'm gonna come down this right-hand side and make sure everything is correct. So my mode is gonna be live. I'm gonna have USD 
build to email, perfect. And then I wanna come down also, don't forget to check this additional gateway settings because there is some information that you'll need to fill out, such as your company email, the business name, your full name, business address, and phone number. There's also a few additional items at the bottom that you might wanna double check to make sure that they are what you want them to be. Perfect, so once we go down to the bottom, we're gonna press continue. And then here is where you would be adding your new product. So like I mentioned, I have already added mine in, but if you wanted to add more, you could click on this create new product button and then you could add as many as you'd like. Okay, so I'm gonna exit out of this and I'm gonna come back to my form. So for this demo, I also wanted to show what conditional logic looks like because it is one of the most used features in a form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add conditional logic to this question, would you like to pay today? So that if somebody clicks yes, then they will see my products, which is that PayPal integration we just did. Um, what, so basically then after they submit the form, they will be able to fill out the invoice and pay right away. Now, if somebody clicks no, they will not see this my product section and then they do not have to pay on the same day. So to set up conditional logic, you're just gonna come up to your settings and you are gonna come to conditions, show high field, and then we're gonna say, let's see here. We're gonna say, would you like to pay today? And then if it's equal to yes, then we're gonna show my products. Perfect, so we're gonna save that. We're gonna come back to our form. And now we're gonna integrate with Airtable. So to do that, we're gonna come back to our settings, come down to integrations, search for Airtable. And then here we're gonna need an API key. So you're gonna come over to your Airtable account, click on your icon, come to account, and then you're gonna get a very special API key that will just go copy paste right there, authenticate, and now we can get started. So as we were mentioning before, Airtable has bases and within the bases they have tables. So in our event planner use case, our bases are events and customer records. So as you can probably guess in the events, we have the different types of events that our event planner plans. So we have weddings, corporate birthdays. Um, and then we come back and our second base is customer records because she's gonna wanna have you know, a, a, a place where all of the customer information lives so that she can go back and reach out again or do some marketing emails with the customers. So we wanna have both of those bases. So we'll come back to job form and we're gonna start with uh, an events base. And today we're just gonna go with weddings to make it simple. So we'll choose weddings as our table, and then we'll match the form field. So basically this just means that when somebody submits their name through your drop form, that name will populate in the name section of your Airtable table. Perfect, so we'll do name, name, we'll do email, email, and I'm just gonna do a couple just to show you, would you like to pay today, and then payment sent. And then we're just gonna do these three for now, but you can add as many form fields from your form to your Airtable uh, table as you'd like. So we're gonna save, and then we're gonna add another base too, which is gonna be the customer record so that you're really getting all of this important information that you can use later on. So again, we're just gonna do name, we're gonna do email, Ooh, whoops, I meant name, got ahead of myself there, email, email and then we'll do phone number so that way you have the customer's information in the event table and you also have it in the customer's table phone number perfect so now we're going to come down and save and then we're going to complete our integration finish press publish open in a new tab and then i will show you how it works so we will do Brianna Joy. Uh, 
at willdotest.com. And then let's see, she'll want to do wedding day, wedding planning. Would you like to pay? So Brina would like to pay. So yes, see how the My Products comes up. She wants to do wedding planning for a dollar. She does not have any other notes. She can sign and then submit. So as you can see, Brianna is directed automatically to her invoice, so she can just pay that right away. And then on the event planner side, she comes back into her Airtable account and she can click on events. And you can see Brianna Joy, her name and her email comes up and that's the only information that we entered and that we connected to Airtable, but you can also do the phone number, event date, attachments, everything, because you'd want the, all that information. Um, we can see that Brianna has been sent the payment, which is great. And then we'll come back to our main dashboard, click on our customer records, and there's Brianna Joy again. So super easy to set up, and you can, as you can see, it really you know, streamlines workflow and makes it so much easier. Okay, great. So now we're going to jump into our questions and answers. Um, so we have some really great questions today. Uh, Kat, it looks like this one is for you. Why would I want to use Airtable instead of a spreadsheet? Uh, well, so as I, as I mentioned earlier, um, spreadsheet software was originally designed to perform financial calculations and spreadsheets do that incredibly well. So like if you're an accountant, uh, you know, keep using those spreadsheets, they're great for that. Uh, for the rest of us though, um, a lot of us encounter spreadsheets as a way of creating just a grid in which we can put information. So if you have like a list of animals at the zoo and then like which zookeeper is taking care of them and their different feeding schedules, having a grid is a great way to provide structure where it didn't exist before. But it turns out that like spreadsheets are not actually designed to really like take that kind of structured information and act on it in a way that accurately matches uh, the relationships between uh, different items and different concepts. Uh, so relational databases are designed to do that. They are designed to make it so that, uh, for example, you can have like a different table of uh, you know, different table of clients and a table of like the interactions you've had with those clients and like different deals you have going on. And you can make links between those so that you don't have to duplicate information across different tables. If something changes in one table, uh, the relationships that you've set up make it so that it changes everywhere, which means that you don't have to worry about things being out of date or things being like duplicated or like versioning control. Uh, which are things that um, a lot of teams can struggle with if they're working on spreadsheets. Um, so that's one reason, uh, you know, you get the power of a relational database. And then with, with the power of a relational database, you can use that to really deeply customize the experience of working for everyone on your team. So uh, let's say that you're using an editorial, you're making an editorial calendar in Airtable and you have an editor and they're very busy. Uh, they don't need to see anything that's like being ideated or drafted. They just need to see things that are done and ready for them to review. So that person could make a specific view. That's what we call them in Airtable of all of the different pieces that are in the pipeline, but filter it just to show the pieces that are ready for them to review. And then when they're done, they can check it off and that'll update everywhere for everyone. And it, you know, the person who is picking it up next in the pipeline can uh, just get on their merry way. Uh, maybe that person who gets the information after the editor, uh, they re they really want to be able to see all of these different pieces that have been approved for publication on a calendar. Uh, well, they can do that too. And anything that they update on the calendar, they can drag and drop and that will change everything uh, for all of the views for everyone in the base. And then like maybe like, you know, the same, like the writer's room when they're like thinking about like how the different pieces are moving across the entire pipeline, they can look at it in a Kanban board. So really like anyone on the team, depending on like what their role is and what they need to accomplish, uh, they can create the tools that make it easy for them. 
without uh, you know stepping on anyone else's toes and making sure that everyone is on the same page. Absolutely. And I love the fact that it just updates across everything too. Like that makes it so nice for everybody on the team to know what's going on. Um, that's great. Okay, cool. Well, it looks like Kat, we have another question for you. Um, it says in Airtable, what are views and how do you make them? So I sort of like, I think maybe talked about this a little bit without going into it uh, more explicitly. And so for that, I apologize, but in Airtable, uh, views are these preset ways of looking at the same underlying information. So let's say that you put out a, a JOT form uh, to get like signups for your volunteer program. And all of that information feeds into the same, into an Airtable base. Now, once all that information is in the Airtable base, there's a variety of different ways that you can look at it. So like, let's say that you wanna see everyone that is avail available to, uh, you know, come in to uh, uh, feed, the, feed the shelter cats on next Tuesday. Uh, you can uh, add a filter, which means that it'll filter out any of the irrelevant records for you. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're being deleted. That's like a difference between uh, Airtable and a spreadsheet is that you can make these kind of like personal views for yourself without um, like interrupting anyone else's experience of the data. Um, and then you can maybe, uh, if you wanted to look at a view in a way that's different from a, a grid-like spreadsheet, grids are great, uh, but if you prefer other ways of looking at your data, you can look at it on a Kanban board like Trello, or you can look at it on a calendar, um, or if you're doing a uh, workflow that's really heavy on images, like if you're managing an art gallery, uh, you can look at these big cards that have, uh, you know, beautiful attachments on them. So uh, that's basically the, the gist of views. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a great answer. Um, thanks, Kat. And it looks like we have another one. Um, this one's for me. What is the difference between Jot Form and Google Forms? So we get this question all the time. Um, and I'd say Jot Form is Google Forms on steroids, pretty much. Um, and I say that because Jot Form is incredibly more powerful um, in terms of form fields, integrations, payment processors, um, in terms of the way you can customize it. Um, it's pretty much completely more powerful than Google Forms. Um, also, JotForm has a lot of native integrations, just like the Airtable one that we're talking about today, too. So that means that it takes out an extra step of trying to find like a third-party app to link the two together. Um, and JotForm um, is also free, just like Google Forms. And so um, it's super easy to create an account and collect your information in um, a lot easier fashion and a lot more powerful fashion than with a Google Form. Um, great, so we also have another question, it looks like for me. Um, what's the difference between Jot Form and Airtable Forms? So I'd say the biggest difference between these two forms is that Jot Form has payment processors. So, you know, if you're an event planner like we saw earlier, you can easily integrate with a payment processor and collect payments. So that makes it really easy to get paid quickly and to just kind of keep all of that information, you know, in one place. Um, let's see, other questions. This one's for Kat. How do you use linked records in Airtable? Uh, so linked records are like really where Airtable's uh, relational database DNA comes into play. So like naturally when we go around in the world, we think about like how things are related to one another. Like this, this person I know works at this company oh, this other person I know also works at this company. We think about the world naturally in terms of like how um, different uh, types of like objects, people and idea relate to each other. And so you can reflect that in uh, your Airtable base. So for example, as I'm like, uh, you know, in this example I just mentioned, uh, if you were making a personal CRM, uh, you could have a table of all the people that you know or that use contact information that you have and you could in that table have a list of the different companies that they work for. Uh, so one thing that you can do is if you have this uh, column that shows like a list of companies, you can turn that into a linked record, which is a 
which is a type of field, but it means that you can uh, jump from one table to another so that when you click on the link in that person's, like, let's say, oh, um, you know, Catherine Dew, she works at Airtable, and you click on the Airtable uh, link, and that will bring you to another table, which is full of all the different companies that all the people that you know work at. So, you know, it will say like Airtable, Jotform, Google, et cetera. And then it kind of works in reverse too. So if you're on the table for um, all, these are all of the companies that are in my, you know, general network. Uh, I can see like under the Airtable entry, oh, there's Catherine Dew. And then click on Catherine Dew, it'll bring me up from the other table. So um, this can get really powerful because you can use um, lookups and rollups and um, other like special fun Airtable features uh, to bring information from one table into the other table while keeping it completely up to date. So like, uh, you know, uh, let's say that I leave my job um, I'm not, I'm not planning on doing that. I hope Airtable's not listening. Uh, but if I removed that link and now, uh, you know, uh, Catherine Dew is starting her own company, uh, that will update everywhere in the entire base. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. That does sound very powerful. Great. Well, that wraps up our questions and answers. Um, we'd like to just say thank you to everybody for watching the webinar today. Um, if you'd like to get more information, please feel free to check out jotform.com. And if you have any specific questions about the integration, feel free to reach out to our support team at support at jotform.com. We'd also like to give a special thanks to Kat for being here today. We are super excited about this integration and we think you all are gonna love it. And thank you to Annabelle for uh, putting on a great webinar. Awesome. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Bye.